Okay, uh, let's begin. All right, so uh, a very good morning to all the audience. And my name is Manmeet, uh, the moderator for this session. Uh, thank you to all of you who are currently joining the uh, online session. So, um, first of all, I would like to uh, welcome our outstanding speaker, uh, Dr. Tawa Maren Kanesen. So, Dr. Tawa, hi, good morning to you. Good morning, Dr. Good morning. Thanks. Thanks good morning. for being here today. Okay, sure. Okay, so before we uh, pass the session to Dr. Tawa, let me briefly um, introduce him. I think most of us already know uh, Dr. Tawa Maran. Anyway, um, just a little bit of his accomplishment with um, completing his PhD in engineering degree. Yeah? Less than three years, Dr. Tawa has founded a consulting firm known as Proofreading by a UK PhD. And beside his impressive publication records, as uh, all of us could actually access from the site, um, to all these impactful journals, Dr. Tawa has also accomplished uh, several research grants and won numerous academic um, academic uh, awards. Yeah. So uh, if you see. Uh, Basically, Dr. Tawa, his expertise uh, in his skills in his coaching and training is undoubtable. And this could be demonstrated by his large number of followers. So as uh, I think I'm also one of the followers and many of our staff and students are also uh, the followers. So uh, before I pass the session to Dr. Tawa, I think uh, these are some of this uh, housekeeping. Uh, this whole session will be recorded, so uh, if you have any question, I think Dr. Tawa is very well ex expert in this matter. He will get back to you as soon as possible. Okay, so I think uh, Dr. Tawa, we are good to go. So I pass the session to you and um, uh, could not wait to learn from you today. Okay, Dr. Tawa. Thank you, Doctor. Thanks for having me. Thanks for organizing again and again. I think you have organized a third one now. So you have one more to go for this year. We're almost in July already. I mean, not almost, we are already in July. It's very, very fast. <laughs> so anyway, thanks again. Let's get started. Hi, everyone. Very good morning to all of you. Uh, very good week uh, for all of you. So I hope all of you are okay. Um, let me share my screen. <clears throat> Okay, before I get started, okay, I am Dr. Tawa. I think uh, Dr. Manmi has given a very good introduction. Um, so let me just quickly ask all of you so that I don't need to uh, uh, go through the housekeeping stuff and how I normally conduct class and so on. How many of you are attending my class for the very first time? Never attend before this, whether in USM or whether on Facebook Live or anything else. Never attended before. So we have uh, Ayub. Never attend before. We have Ernisa, uh, Theo Keng Boon, never attend before. We have one there, Victor Lee, never. Quite a, quite a big number as well. Okay, surprising. Every 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 class I still meet new guys. That's what I love, I love about this. Okay, so it's nice to meet new faces, nice to meet new people. That's the that's the best part of what I do. Okay. So um actually we are already in quarter number three now. I'm sorry about that. I don't even know how fast time is going. It's flying. Okay, I just felt like started the first class because this whole uh, this uh, CSR classes, I started my first class with USM back in January, and then now it's already third class. I don't even know. You know, time passed so fast. Uh, so we already finished the first class, focusing solely on thesis development. Just to give you a bit of recap on the history for all the new joiners, we 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 uh, checked out on uh, thesis development with a slight um, uh, a slight inclination or slight. Uh, storytelling on publication, and then the second class we had like a couple of weeks ago. I think I, I think probably a couple of weeks ago, focusing solely on high impact publication with a slight inclination, a slight information on thesis development. So we already cover uh, both bases. Okay, so um, <clears throat> now from that publication perspective and thesis perspective, now we're moving towards a review paper. Um, why systematic review? Because it's very hot. A lot of people like it. It's very uh, viral. <laughs> That's the right word. That, uh, that is the right word to use. It's very viral, very trendy. 
and it's also solid okay it's trendy and viral because it's very solid okay it's, it has a very good footing very good ground when you want to write a review paper you want audience to accept I mean, audience your reviews to accept it um, uh, you want them to recognize you want to go high impact and so on systematic review is good because it goes through very rigorous process rigorous processes to conduct review okay whether you want to write a conceptual paper you want to find a research gap or you just want to do a, a roadmap review or you want to do an integrative review uh, many different review okay but uh, systematic review is just a type of methodology always keep that in mind systematic review means not only one type systematic review you can do many types if you know how to use it as a tool as a methodology like how you do quantitative or you do data analytics or you do uh, uh, deep learning, whatever you do, your programming and stuff, a lot of computer science guys here. Uh, similarly, systematic review is a methodology. So always remember that it's not just a review paper. Uh, it's a very powerful tool, actually. If you know how to conduct it very carefully, uh, very wisely, very precisely, it's a very powerful tool. I'm sorry, I'll, I'll take a bit of time to talk because I'm not feeling well, so I'm still recovering. Uh, very bad influenza nowadays. So, okay. Um, let's get started so we're going to look into systematic literature review mostly for publication and a bit of a touch on thesis as well okay because systematic review some people are using it for thesis uh, but not many if you ask me should i use systematic review for thesis i would say yes and no because there are disadvantages to systematic review so everything has pros and cons like in life everything has pros and cons uh, why not because systematic review sometimes would not open uh, the opportunity to read many papers, okay. You, if you filter it too much, okay. If the filtration is too uh, uh, precise, not uh, very very low sensitivity, but very high precision, you will end up getting uh, very little papers to review. So that would not be enough to strengthen your PhD thesis. So that's why normally PhD thesis or even masters for that matter, you must read widely. You must read openly. We must have very be open minded for that. Scoping review is very good for that. So I, Scoping review is also very well encouraged. They are more or less the same, just that um, there's a bit of uh, a bit of difference to it, lah. Okay, all right. So um, let's get started. I'm not going to go through this. I think most of you know me. I think I don't want to bore you with with this information again. Like I think uh, many had done that already. Um, so let's go talk about uh, why I am here. Okay. So this is part of my since we already third talk and some of you are joining for the first time. Um, Proofreading by UK PhD is a company I founded many years ago. I think now what we are at the eighth or ninth year now. Uh, we work very closely. I work very closely with with Malaysian universities, all public universities, private universities, all of them. Uh, internationals, I don't really focus on them, but they somehow you know find me because of Facebook. Thanks to Facebook with large following, they will come. Okay, people from Peru, people from Chile, people from Mexico, they will come, uh, uh, and so on and so forth. So. Um, this is the sole reason that I'm here and whatever I'm sharing knowledge with you guys is based on the experience that I've gained from all the papers that we have reviewed, we have proofread, we have coached, we have consulted. These are all information I've collected over time. These are all my own analytics that I've, con that I've conducted, that I've uh, collected. So not, uh, not any two papers are alike. They are all different. Every subject area is different. Within the subject area, the papers are different. So, you know, not uh one one theory it doesn't apply to everyone when it comes to publishing right so um on that note today we are going to cover um okay under under what we do um, um uh, in terms of what we use to provide as services i'm going to talk about our experience from this arena so today we are going to focus on publication part this is the general conversion a bit okay not so much just a bit because the last class we already touched a lot on that uh, and then we are going to touch this with all of this as well. Okay. And we are going, yeah, we're going to talk about this as well. Definitely. All right. Okay. So these are the things that we're going to look into. These are the things that I usually work on very frequently. Uh, and, um, based on my experiences of, I think now we already hit, I never update this number. Uh, but now I think we already hit about 21,600 already. So, um, these are the, the, um, the, um, immense amount of experience that had that given me that I can share all this knowledge with you guys. Okay, so as usual for all the new joiners, the old joiners, they know what to do. They, they will be very active later, but all the new joiners, keep this in mind, stop doing whatever else that they're doing. If you're on, uh, you know, if you're attending your meeting, you're working, you're writing a paper, your thesis, your chapters, whatever that you're doing, 
or already preparing for upcoming Raya and so forth. Stop doing all of that. If you're on Lazada and Shopee and so on, stop doing all of that. Leave it for later. These two hours will be very beneficial for all of you. Ask the guys who have attended before. They know that very well. Don't do anything else. I want you to give your full attention here. Keep your phone very, very, very far away from you. As far as possible, your phone. Okay, that is a disastrous one single equipment. Keep that far away and be active on your keyboard because I'll ask you a lot of questions. You need to respond as well. And you can also ask questions as I go. This is an informal session. Okay, informal. Nothing formal here. It's only sharing knowledge so that we can openly uh, discuss. Okay. All right. How many of you here? I always ask this question because I have new classes added recently. How many of you here have attend never attended my Facebook live classes before? So I can share with you all my latest classes as well. Please respond in the uh, chat box. Uh, uh, don't raise hand, guys. They respond in the chat box so that I, I don't need to look at two different spaces. Uh, so let me know uh, how many of you never attended any of my Facebook live class before so I can tell you where to go and find these classes. These are completely free resources that is not part of the classes that I'm conduct conducting for USM. These are classes that I conduct based on the request of students and academicians. When you know, after this class, I'll give you the opportunity again for you to ask new classes. I only have one more class coming up on 12th of July. Okay, so uh, I'll give you the opportunity to ask new classes so we can do something for these upcoming uh, months. Okay, all right. So it seems like some never attended before. Very well. Let me show you guys. Um, <laughs> okay, so the, oh no, this is a wrong profile. This profile usually won't allow me to um, check out my own Facebook classes. Facebook is a bit of a mess sometimes. So uh, just give me a quick moment. Um, okay. Uh, right. Okay, fantastic. All right. So, um, let me go to my Facebook page. This is proofreading by UK PhD Facebook page. Uh, this is where I do most of my work. Okay, this is like all sort of my work center. Lah, okay, uh, you you uh, if you guys never visited before my Facebook page, uh, this is where I normally run all my classes, online classes. So if you're a supervisor, I can see a lot of doctors around. You can always encourage your students to come and join. These are all completely free classes. They can come and join anytime they want. They can also watch all the free classes as well. So uh, before we move forward, uh, just to let you guys know, um, last Saturday, I created this template, okay? Literature matrix with theoretical aspect as well. So um, might not be so relevant for computer science guys, but if you're looking at theoretical perspective as well, it might be relevant. But if you want like a general uh, uh, literature matrix template to conduct as part of this class today's systematic review, that I already created a template. You guys can go and download. Uh, the link is down here. Uh, it's a my Telegram group. I'll share later. But um, this is the literature matrix I've created. I promised very long ago, but I've done it already. Uh, and then the upcoming, the final class we have on 12th of July, which is proposal defense by December 2022. These are all the plus, past classes finished already. Uh, I'll tell you, Usman, I'll tell you. That's the problem with Facebook. I'll definitely tell you. So this is the upcoming class. If anyone is interested, 12th of July, uh, which is right after uh, Eid holidays. So um, if you're interested, this is the link for you to register yourself. Okay, I've already given the link to register your class here. And then the um, past classes, that's the essential part. Those are the assets that you guys want to watch, right? Like I did this class uh, two or three days, no, last week. Concept paper before proposal depends. How to write a concept paper, all right? So this is the class. And the rest of the classes, you can find it here. Free writing tutorials by Dr. Tawa. Okay, so these are all the classes that you can find. You just click that, Hi. you will see. Hi. 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 Uh, Angbera Ature, can you please uh, mute your mic? Thank you. So uh, these are classes that I've conducted. It's a new chapter, a concept paper, chapter one template, starting a PhD proposal, five methods to find research gap, uh, designing questionnaire, uh, uh, literature review databases, and so on. So for three journals from a thesis, uh, PhD daily time planning, Q1 web of science, uh, general class, how to get a journal a paper to be accepted 
in Elsevier Journal without correction. Impact Factor 5.8, an engineering paper. Uh, I've had a, I have had a session with Dr. Hidayat. I worked personally on the paper, so I know this paper very well. So if you guys want to know, is it possible or not, this is the class to go and watch. Okay. So same thing, many different class, 112 classes you can watch, methodology, mixed method, uh, time management, uh, paraphrasing, theoretical framework, and so on and so forth. Okay. So these are the links, uh, these are the classes, and this is the link. All right. So that is that. Um, and then for today, as usual, always, the Telegram group is very important. This is where you'll find a lot of resources. For this particular class systematic review, I, I prepared this uh, before I came for USM class. I prepared this last Saturday. So you can download the PDF file here, right? Um, so this is the PDF file to, to show you how you can fill up. So I've already done the literature matrix. The hard work is done already. Author, subject, uh, and but you can modify, like you can modify this variable, uh, variable uh, related, but you can always modify these columns. You can convert to word and you can, you know, modify as you, as you please. Okay. So, um, the rest of the links to all my other classes, um, all of these will be given here. Um, those are the links. Okay. So you can, uh, make use of it. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. So, um, I'll give you one minute for those who haven't uh, joined my telegram group. I've given my telegram, uh, group link, YouTube link, Facebook page and TikTok link as well. All right. So these are all short videos here and there random. Uh, if you have free time, you want to go and watch, you can go and watch. Okay. But telegram is very important because all the files will, can be found here. I share all the PDF files here, right? So example, literature review summary, you can find it here. Uh, you just put summary how to summarize a paper uh, this is a literature review summary sheet right here so you can download this make use of it and uh, see how it will help you okay so i've already shared the link with all of you you can join if you want to okay now let's get started so we have six different sections to cover we are going to look at um why systematic review why systematic review and where to publish them first of all Next, we're going to look at types of review papers, a bit, a bit more in depth, just looking at review papers alone. Okay, types of review papers and not types of papers. The last round, I already shared about types of papers. This time, we're going to talk about review papers alone. Um, systematic review process, um, criteria for a SLR paper writing, journal versus thesis for systematic approach, when to write SLR papers. Okay, now, before I start, no problem, Linda, no worries at all. Before I start, uh, how many of you here are not from computer science area? Because I shared link across different USM faculties as well. Um, yes, definitely, Dr. Rafida, no problem. Um, anyone else? So we have, okay, we have quite a bit. So pharmacy, clinical pharmacies, you guys know systematic review very well. We have education as well. Uh, please do mention your area. Don't just put one. I don't know what is one. Do mention your from which area, yeah? HPP, AMDI, management, education, uh, electrical, language assessment, microbiology. So, but, okay, for pharmacies, microbiology, all these areas, you guys, virology, you guys know systematic review very, very well, right? Because it originated from medical sciences. Okay, that, that is the finding father of, of systematic review. It started way back, I'll share later, okay, mathematics as well. Uh, all right, okay, cool. But for those from computer science, uh, medical science, we can leave them from computer science, from social, from language and so on. <clears throat> Systematic review might not be very familiar with you, uh, for you. Uh, some might be even against it because I have uh, recently heard from certain students. They say, my supervisor don't allow me to write systematic review, but I really want to write, um, from building engineering. Yes. From, from, from construction engineering, I think yeah. construction engineering, uh, this student from, uh, from the UK. I think uh, from Coventry University or uh, Bradford, either one of it from the UK, one of my clients. Um, so this student told me uh, that the student, the, the, the supervisor don't allow to publish systematic review, uh, but they want to follow Prisma method, but don't want to publish a systematic review paper. Uh, so he came to me for coaching, for coaching and consulting. I got very confused. I told him, if you follow Prisma method, that means you are doing systematic review. How can you not do systematic review, but follow Prisma method? 
See, that is the problem. It's not their mistake. They don't understand what is systematic review, what is Prisma and so on. Because people from that, that was uh, engineering, engineering, computer science or social science and so on. Some most, I think majority still don't know what is systematic review because they are not very familiar. They only know narrative review. And I have to explain to you as well, guys from computer science, engineering, they don't really write review papers that much because they are more data guys, more empirical guys, more modeling software guys where they do empirical papers or software papers, mostly modeling theoretical papers. They don't really do review papers. So even my time was, I do very little review papers. Okay. I do mostly pop 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 empirical papers all the time because the review papers is kind of frowned upon. Like, you know, you don't really put so much of effort. You empirical papers, always the upper hand and uh, review papers, always the, the lower hand. And, you know, you don't really get it published, but the things are changing, especially during a pandemic. When they couldn't get data, uh, then they started realizing what else can I do? How else can I publish? Then people started jumping into the review paper bandwagon, right? So that's where systematic review, scoping review, uh, co-current review, all this started heating up. Uh, it started way back 2019, but the, 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 the turbo boost was during pandemic. Right? And then sort of people just followed after that. So if you're in computer science, if you're in social science, if you're in uh, assessment, language side, linguistics, and so on, engineering, hardcore physics, uh, physics, electrical engineering, and so on, you all can still do systematic review. No harm done. It is not meant for medical only. It was designed for medical, but not only for medical. That's why you get a lot of complicated things. When you go through Prisma, you'll be like, why the hell should I do all of this? What is ethical clearance? Computer science, I, we don't really do ethical. It's only programming. I'm dealing with computers and apps. Some, if you relate to human life and so on, maybe you need to do ethics. But most of us, like I deal with computer, that computer got no emotion and feeling. Why should I do ethics? You don't need to. Depends on your study. Okay, depends on your study entirely. So don't worry about it. Okay, so uh, why do you want systematic literature? Okay, now most I need to ask you this to you guys. Okay, um, since you are joining here, that means you are interested. Obviously, how many how many of uh, participants we have today? We have uh, 111. Oh, okay. I didn't know the number was 100 plus already. Okay. Why do you guys want to do systematic review? What is the sole purpose? Why you guys are here? What, what do you guys want to get out of this? In the chat box, yeah? Keyboard warriors. Okay, don't forget. Hmm. Must be a very specific reason that why you are here, right? So do explain to me why why do you want to do systematic review to track developments over the years in a specific area? Okay, fair enough. Anyone else to find the gap? I was thinking if I can only fit to my PhD. Okay. Okay. All right. Updated a variety of literature. But if, if you guys want to do all this review stuff, uh, you can do normal narrative review. Why you want to do systematic review? Why? There should be a specific reason why systematic review. Supervisor asked too. That's a very good answer. <laughs> I know that for sure to most students, it's because supervisor asked so. <laughs> you guys can be honest. You can say my supervisor asked so. I still don't know why I need to do systematic review. As a matter of fact, I never even heard of this thing. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, that's very good answer, uh, B. Saslina. Very good answer. SLR is guided by specific methodology. Yes. Very good uh, to love Fikar, uh, not biased. Okay. Also good, Dr. Rafida. Very nice. Yes, that's, that's a very good purpose. Is Vijay also is right to a certain extent? Yes. Okay. Also good, Satuti. Uh, all right. So you guys sort of understand you guys, some of you said general literature review. You don't need to go through systematic for that. You can just do general literature review uh, to find research gap. Actually, research gap, if you know, uh, I wouldn't tell, I won't say, I don't say it that way. That's wrong. If, if you do it right, whether you do systematic review or whether you do a uh, normal review, you can still find research gap. Systematic review is doesn't help you to get research gap more easier than uh, literature, narrative review. Narrative review is a traditional one that you do without having any guidance. You don't even know what, what on earth you're doing. No clue, nothing whatsoever, right? So that was a systematic review. Doesn't mean systematic review is going to give you more gap. 
No, no such thing. Okay, because systematic review is all about how to find papers, how to which database you use, how you determine to find paper, and then what is your research question based on that. How do you include? How do you exclude? You know, it's those just those, those processes. Those processes actually doesn't help you to get your research gap end of the day. Research gap still comes down to how you synthesize the information from the paper that you read based on your understanding. You are still the person there. Okay, systematic review is just a, a walking stick for you, a car to drive. Okay, whether narrative review can be Toyota and systematic review can be Honda, but that doesn't mean that. Uh, it's going to drive for you. It's not Tesla. Okay. It's not Tesla. So always remember that when you go into systematic review, you feel like, ah, again, the same thing. I still cannot find the gap. Yes, you will have, you will happen to have the same effect as well because end of the day, the gap comes from you. Okay. From your synthesis, how you look at things. Okay. All right. So keep that in mind. That's why I want to know how is your understanding. Okay. Uh, types of journal papers, if you attended the last class, I've already explained this to you, but I have to recap this again. Empirical papers, original research, we're not going to look into it today. Rapid communications or letters, short, short journals, we call that, not going to look into it as well. Case studies, uh, legal case study, medical case study, medical case series, not going to look into it today. We are only going to look into review articles, okay? Why systematic review? First, uh, introduced by not formally knowing James Lynn didn't know that he's doing systematic review, but he did follow the steps of systematic review. So 1753 by Sir James Lynn, then 1970 to 1980 received more attention very long ago. Huh? We are only using systematic review mostly nowadays in engineering and social, but this was invented way, way, way back. Originated in medical sciences, okay, because medical sciences to a certain extent always have very advanced uh, methodology because uh, they they always relate them uh, they or their research is always related to human beings right so it's very sensitive so they are very very careful of the methodology they use if you're relating to computer apps you know and so on and so forth doesn't really um, uh, directly threat humans life then the 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 methodology even if it's not so rigorous it's still okay but medical they are very very attentive to their methodology okay why why you need to do it? For because it's clear and comprehensive over available literature, right? It can be very comprehensive. That's true, as I told you, it's a different methodology. To find the right papers for you, helps identify research gap because it finds the right paper for you, but it won't give you the research gap. It won't tell you, nah, here you go, this is the research gap. No such thing, right? Able to highlight methodological concerns for future work, true, because systematic review is very homogeneous. We call it homogeneous because if you do quantity, you can only go for quantity. If you do quality, you go for quality. Okay, that means if you do software centric, you go for software centric only. Able to gain critical skills by conducting systematic literature review. Yes. How? First, you need to define explicit research questions. Okay, what are the questions you are trying to find answer? That must have research questions. Okay, even if this is objective, it's fine. Okay, it's fine. If the reviewers understand that, Research question is almost the same as a research objective, both finding the same purpose. Then if they have that amount of uh, uh, open minus, they can understand the logics behind it and not simply uh, tied up to a uh, uh, petty understanding, then you won't have problem. But some people, they have very narrow understanding. They are like robots. They cannot think beyond logics. No, they cannot think beyond practice. They have memorized, they don't have logics anymore. Then they'll say, you must have research question. Actually, it's all the same. Objective or question, end of the day, it's just a purpose, all right? Can I have just one RQ for my SLR? Yes, you can, no problem at all. You can have one RQ, which will translate into many different aspects of uh, things that you need to find out. Yes, definitely. Do a search on Pro Prospero to find similar SLR. Okay, if you're in medical line, there is a database called Prospero, which they'll go register the available systematic literature review. but you cannot really find on computer science or social because Prospero is more uh, medical inclined, but you can have a look, Prospero. <clears throat> okay, it's a website. Adopt comprehensive, objective, and reproducible search strategy. This is the key of systematic review. Why systematic review? It's because of this. Because you will explain how exactly you found your papers. 
this is important because when you go for your viva or when you go for a, a, what they call that a, a review process when the examiner reviewers ask you why you miss out this paper why you never go through that paper why you never go through this paper why you never read that paper they will ask you then you can tell me specific to my research question i have designed my inclusion and exclusion criteria okay i'll tell you what is inclusion and exclusion based on this inclusion of all these databases, these are the only papers they have given me. And based on the quality assessment that I've conducted, the only these papers are relevant to me. That way, you can completely shut your reviewers and examiners in a very precise and systematic manner, very logical way of doing things. All right. So if you do narrative review, that's the only problem. If you do narrative review, you open the whole floodgate. Everything will come in. All right. So they'll ask you why you never do, why you never read this, why you never read that. You'll be like, um, I don't know. Probably I missed out. That's how you can answer. You can say, um, you, it's very hard for you to say it's irrelevant because they'll ask you, how is it not relevant? You must be able to explain now. You can explain, obviously. During my Viva, they asked me as well, why you never read this paper? Why you never read that paper? Although I read 1,230 papers, I think, in my PhD. I read 1,230 papers because I now use systematic review. So I read every day I read papers to be sure that during Viva, my, my, my examiners cannot suddenly come up with a paper. Here you go. Uh, tell me why you never go through this paper, why you never address this paper in your literature, why this paper had done this, but you never actually mentioned about it. Uh, to avoid that, I went through these many papers, but even then, the examiner could find papers that I did not go through. He, they asked me about this one particular paper that I did not go through. So, must be very, very careful in that manner, right? And you must also understand, you might think that examiners might not know all the literature that they're going through. You might, you might think so, because they are very busy. I look at my supervisor, my supervisor is also very busy. Of course, their professors are very busy. They won't really go into details, you know. Some people try to convince themselves, you have to understand. Those supervisors also have PhD students and their PhD students will be given tasks. Sometimes I was given last time, my supervisor after he went through a thesis as an external examiner, he trained me to be examiner last time. Okay, that is part of the training process of a PhD student. Because once you become an academician, you become an external examiner as well. Um, so he gave me this thesis from uh, Edinburgh University. I still remember Edinburgh University. So I went through a thesis, he told me, this is a, these are the sticky notes, this is the thesis. I already went through one round. I don't want you to give the same comment as I did. I want you to go through this thesis brutally and tell me what are the problems. I went through. I went through each and every line, okay, between the lines, below the lines, on top of the line, everything I went through. And I, I added, he added yellow sticky, I added red sticky, a pinky sticky. So I added at every page and I was very sad for the student, lah, to be fair. But even she still got major correction. So don't ever underestimate an examiner or reviewer is fine even reviewer also i used to review all my supervisor's papers he will get he will just forward to me tama review i triple e l severe this is during the starting point for me to impress my supervisor i'll go very brutal on those papers i feel sad i feel very sad nowadays okay why i did all that but yeah it is what it is so be prepared okay and then so that's why this comprehensive objective and reproducible research strategy is very important you can follow Prisma, which is very, very, very detailed and complex. Very detailed and complex, all right? Okay. Now, another matter you need to highlight, okay? Like uh, I think uh, one of the doctors said earlier, let me see, Dr. Rafida said, main purpose is to get published by Q1, Q2 journal, which is true, okay? Which is true. I love that fact, okay? Because systematic review and scoping review, both also can get you there. So on that note, um, how to find suitable systematic review journals? How? Like you want to submit to a, to a, um, a review uh, review paper. You, okay, let's say you've already written a systematic review paper. But you don't know which journal to submit to. Empirical paper, you can submit easily because all journals will accept empirical paper. But systematic review papers, not all journals will accept. So you need to find out, right? You need to find out how, I mean, which journal actually accepts systematic review journal. Okay, so on that note, this is an example. Okay, this is an example. So let me go through this uh, MDPI journal. All right, so this is MDPI Education Sciences. Okay, just an example. Uh, just an example. Education Sciences. This is a Scopus 
uh, ESCI journal. Also, ISI but under ESCI, no quartile yet. <clears throat> okay. So if you go here, you will see instruction for authors. You can you can find out here like, the, the the column is there, the menu is here, right? So if you go down, there will be many options. Okay, blah 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 blah, many different things. For me, I don't want to go through all. That. I just want to know where is the word systematic. Is there the word systematic or not? So here you go. So manuscript submission overview, types of publications. I just click control I put systematic. Here you go. Articles, original research manuscript. That means empirical papers, lah. All right. Reviews. Okay, they have special column reviews. These provide concise and precise updates on the latest progress made in a given area of research. Systematic reviews should follow the Prisma guideline. So this journal do accept systematic review. They do. Okay, they do. Okay. So that is the one way to find out now. <clears throat> But this journal, Journal of Business Research, doesn't have that. Okay, it doesn't have that. So um, let me just Google this very quickly. The journal of Business Research. Okay. As we had, is Impact Factor 7.55, very good journal, right? But if you go through this journal, uh, Guide for Authors and so on, uh, no, I'm not working. Yeah. Don't know why it is not working. Oh my. So uh just to let you know, okay, this part here, um if you read here, Journal of uh, uh, Business Research, if you go to the website, uh, I don't know why the website is not working suddenly. Um, under aims and scope or anywhere, okay, aims and scope or under abstract or call for papers anywhere, you won't be able to find that word systematic review or systematic or SLR. You won't be able to find because they never mention. They never mention anything about uh, systematic review. So let me ask you guys, on that note, we, can you actually submit your systematic review paper here? Do you think they'll accept? How about the rest? What do you guys think from your experience? Do you think they will, they will actually, actually consider? If you don't know, you can say don't know. Don't worry about that. Okay, that's why you're here to learn. Maybe it's a good answer because you're not certain. You cannot say no directly. Not really also can be a right answer because you're not certain. Can inquire with the editor, very good point. Okay, Allah, very, very good point. Anyone else? Any other suggestion? <clears throat> no, not really, it's not about good or not good. Whether the journal will recognize systematic review or not. Very good, higher today, very, very good. Okay, so that's the right thing to do. So what you do, you go to Google Scholar, right? So you go and search, you go to advanced search, you type uh, authored by, published in Journal of Business Research. And then what you do, you put exact phrase, systematic review, and then you search. There you go. General Business Research, and they have accepted many systematic review problem solved. If you want to know whether recently did they accept or not, just go since 2021. Nah? There you go. Last year they accepted systematic review, systematic review, systematic review, systematic review, systematic review, and so on. Yes, you can. Absolutely can. You don't even need to email the editor. Just do one simple search, and you are done. Okay, that is the fastest and best way. To, you must always go and find out first. Before you write a paper, you must decide the journal first. And after you decide the journal, you must know if the journal will accept systematic review or not. Very, 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 very crucial. You need to find out. Okay. So uh, will they accept scoping review? I think scoping review is not very well, very widely written before, but I, like you can, we can check. We can definitely check. You can type scoping review. Uh, yes, they have also scoping review, scoping review they have. Okay. Maybe very little, as I said, uh, scoping review is still very new to the market 
for other than medical. Medical research, they know scoping they view. Okay. Karam, uh, what are the possible you know, not to accept? Because some journal they don't recognize review papers. They don't want to waste their time on review papers. They only want to focus on empirical papers. Some journal they only will recognize review papers if they give you invitation as to, to, uh, to submit paper, invited papers. Only invited papers they will call for review papers. If not invited, they normally don't want review papers. They want hardcore empirical papers. Okay, so that could be the reason. That that not could be that is the sole reason. Uh, how about Cochrane review? Okay, Cochrane review. I don't think you will find it, but let's see. No way. Cochrane review is hundred percent medical. Very very rarely you. I have never seen before out of medical area Cochrane review. Okay, so that is how you find out the first step. This is the first step you need to do before deciding whether what systematic review you want to do, what you're going to write, what filtration, how many papers, research question, forget all of that. First thing, decide the journal. Have at least three to four. Okay? Why you must have at least three to four? Why you guys think so? I know most of you might not know why three to four. This is a very, this is a very, very important strategy. You must have three to four because if one journal rejects, you know where to go to the next. And next rejects, you know where to go to the next. At least you must have four. I believe from our experience of coaching many different papers, I think we already hit 21,000 clock already. Um, normally, more it won't go more than four submission. <clears throat> To get an, uh, a review okay more normally four to five submissions i think we can get a review already so that's why i say have four journals why you must shortlist in advance doctor why not later because every journal has its own word count so you must in advance decide four three to four four better uh, four journals where they must have similar word counts okay because imagine you choose the first paper twelve thousand word count but the subsequent journals all only accept four thousand word counts oh you must cut down 8,000 words, 8,000 words. So what are you going to do with 8,000 words? So it's better to decide earlier for journals where we'll have similar, like some one say 6,000, one say 8,000, one say 7,000, one say 5,000. So what you can do, you can maintain 5,500 or 6,000. So you can submit, next one comes, the first ask 5,000, just 500 words, do this 500 words now. Okay, all right. Um, Allah, I have never heard of coaching coconut review. Coconut review is a bit, uh, it's, it's very old, but it's a, it's a derivative of systematic review, widely used in medical area. Uh, our runs up, doctor, is, is it not better to submit to same journal as we know what are their requirements? Submit to this. No, if rejected, if rejected, you need to, if rejected and they never allow you to resubmit, they really don't want your paper uh, for any, any one of the million reasons they don't want, then you have to find another general one. So, yeah, you need to have backup plan with the similar word count. Okay, word count is very important these days. Okay, then comes to fast publishing. Many ones fast, 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 fast. I want paper in two months. I want paper in three months. I want paper in one month. Uh, how about bibliometric, uh, bibliometric analysis? I'm not into bibliometric analysis, so I don't have much to say about bibliometric analysis. Uh, my, my simple comment, my simple response is, I would rather write a systematic review or scoping review or just normal narrative review than doing bibliometric analysis because most Q1, Q2 and so on, they are all systematic review, narrative review and scoping review. Bibliometric review, I think probably uh, if, you have, if, you, if you find 100 systematic review, you will find two bibliometric analysis. So what for? I rather do systematic review. Okay. All right. I hope you guys understand that. Um, next thing. Everyone wants fast publishing. Okay, fast publishing means you have to pay a lot of money. So be prepared. A lot of people are against MDPI. Okay, not a lot of a lot of institutions. I don't want to say institutions are against because if uh, citation is increasing for MDPI, there is many universities actually publishing MDPI. Uh, individuals, I would say individuals, but certain universities at the top management level, they are discussing about MDPI. Uh, but if you ask me whether they are good or not, for me, they are excellent because they are fast. But they are nasty because they are very expensive. Too expensive. I think for a journal, the price that they are charging, um, I have to be honest, services offered by Proofreading by UK PhD is not cheap either. Uh, we are definitely one of the premium in Malaysia. But compared to MDPI, how they charge for their journal, that's crazy. Every paper that you submit, 
digitally and their reviewers they are uh, reviews they're doing it for free people i mean academics is doing it for free editors are working for free no one is getting paid and yet they're charging uh 1850 franc swiss franc for one sustainability journal one paper is crazy amount of money but they're doing it and they are not worried to do that because they're premium they're fast they are really really fast but in the process of being fast sometimes they 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 uh, they accept weak papers as well but most of the time they are very strict okay last year i got five rejections from mdpi so if anyone tell me mdpi is easy uh, <laughs> i wouldn't say so the only these i managed to get one mdpi that was last march scoping review paper uh, but the publication very fast on my last paper i was a guest editor for uh, mdpi census i think uh, three or four years ago so i know their process is very tedious uh, then two years ago i published my first mdpi sustainability uh, very fast, within uh, 32 or 33 days. This time I published uh, uh, in Open Innovation uh, Journal, um, which will be suitable for computer science guys as well, or most of the guys here will be suitable, Open Innovation. I published in 35 days, so they are very fast. If you want fast, this is fast, but it's not easy to get acceptance, not easy at all. Okay, last year I never even get one MDPR. End up I went to Sage Open and oh, no, every other journal. IEEE Access is another uh, uh, another boss of all bosses, uh, very high quality. IEEE Access, I don't think you can find lousy journals. The MDPI you can find sometimes, but IEEE Access, I don't think you can. And IEEE Access is really um, gold journal, it's really good, but very expensive. So how much is the price? Okay, sustainability is actually 2,000 CHF, which is about 10,000 ringgit, I think. Uh, and then uh, for IEEE access, I think it's uh, 1,850 USD, which is um, 7, 8,000 8, plus now. Okay, all right. So um, if you want fast, IEEE access is not so fast, but definitely faster than free journals. Uh, so if you want fast, be prepared with the green green. Okay, you must have green green, then you can want fast. If you ask me, doctor, if that's the case, I go Scopus, la. Scopus or fast? Scopus fast, how much is the journal? Q4 the other day, my, my, my client published 950 USD. Uh, last week, Tuesday, got another paper accepted. Uh, Q2 Scopus, uh, 450 euro. Who said it's cheap? It's not cheap either. Okay, so it is a very strong business, like you asked me. Okay, types of review papers are these are all the review papers. Oh, sorry, supposed to be here. These are eh, no, correct. This side, okay. These are all the review papers that you can actually write. Okay, not only this and this also. So if you ask me, can I write bibliometric analysis? Can I write this? Can I write that? Of course you can. But what is very familiar and what fits your purpose? I've given all the description. This will take for me a day to go through. <laughs> so many times. So I'm going to give you the slides. Don't worry about it. You can read through and pick what is most appropriate for you. Now I've given highlight as well of colors. Blue color are non-systematic review. Okay. Red color are systematic process. Okay, or following systematic sort of systematic processes. So you have critical review, you have literature review, two are different. What difference? You can read here, right? Or you can you can read and understand it yourself. Okay. And then we have mapping review, systematic map. Okay, this is something like scoping review. Okay, we will talk about this more later down the line, all right? You need, if you're going to do systematic review for your thesis, you need to follow something like this, mapping review. Okay, map out and categorize existing literature. And then you have meta analysis, which is part of systematic review. A very uh, complex thing to do, not easy, it's not straightforward. Okay, keep in mind, it's not straightforward. And then you have mixed studies review, uh, mixed method review. So this is based on narrative review blue color is narrative review or not systematic process then you have overview review overview reviews is a review uh, then you have another one systematic process followed qualitative systematic review okay then we have rapid review based on narrative review then you have scoping which is totally different doesn't fall under narrative doesn't fall under systematic is totally different scoping let's have a different color then you have state of the art review systematic review the old traditional one systematic search and review Systemized review, umbrella review. So if you ask me, doctor, which review paper should I use or should I write? Um, that is the most comprehensive table that can answer all your questions. All right. So don't worry, I'll share this with you because 
I do a lot of research on review papers, and this is part of my research process as well. Okay, now, can we write review papers of social science, for engineering, for medical? Obviously, can. Lah. These are some of the prime examples that I've seen in my lifetime. Okay, I, I only share papers that we worked on personally, whether proofreading, whether coaching, whether consultancy, different, different arenas. Okay. Uh, I, I only share papers that I'm very, very impressed with personally. I'm being honest. Okay, I'm very, very impressed. This is a paper that I'm very, very impressed on systematic review purposes. If you're from social science, or even if you're from computer science, you can always do systematic review on a more social context. You can, you can do that, all right? So, uh, this is a paper that you can follow. Soft and hard PQM practices, future research agenda for industry 4.0. So, if you're in computer science, you can always do a, a review paper on industry 4.0 and you can look at these examples, right? The, why I like this paper, it's from uh, Dr. Kashif, my very good friend from UTP. Um, he got very good depictions of the processes. For like example, he includes publication years. Why it's important to include publication years? Okay, let me, let me ask, let me let you, let me ask you guys. From this graph, all right, this author included publication years. He got from 1994 to 2019. And then he showed how many papers published in similar area as this, okay, over 20 years period or 20, is it? And uh, no, uh, more than 20, 25 years actually. Why do you think this is important? Can anyone give me just from on top of their mind, why do you think this graph is important? Very good, Yusef. Very, very good. Okay, so that is the answer. Show interest over time. This will show you a very nice um, um, a reverse exponential curve or exponential. I don't know. I forgot the exponential is this. That is reverse exponential. I think so. A reverse exponential curve curve that is showing that the interest is rising over time. If they if they uh, sort of interpolate the points, if you interpolate the points. You will be able to show a nice smooth curve <clears throat> showing that the interest is increasing over time. So it's a very good topic to do review process. You are telling the review is a hot topic at the moment and the editor as well. Okay. All right. So it is important for you to do this analysis before even you start. Before even you start, after you get the, the, the papers you download based on inclusion criteria. Do this analysis to see whether the, the topic is important or not. If it is, you can know whether you want to do the review process or not. Okay. It is not compulsory. Okay, it is not compulsory. But if you want to go for ISI Q1, for scopus, you don't need to go so deep. I'm being honest with you. We coach a lot of scopus paper systematic review, a lot, a lot. We do on weekly basis. Um, that's why people ask me, why scopus? We don't have all the scopus, you don't need to. Scopus you can easily get to. Okay, I think you do. Um, Q3, even sometimes Q1, Scopus original Q1, not ISI Q1, and then Scopus Q1. I'm talking about just Scopus Q1 only. You can get through probably without this diagram. You can. So you don't need to spend so much of time doing all this, but it is a good practice for you to do. It's a good practice. If you want ISI, you must do all this. You must. It is a must. Okay. And this one shows. Your search string process, okay? Your search string. That means how do you search um, from um, this thing is blocking my view? Uh, okay, from data search, which database do you go to, and from the database, what search string did you actually use? This is very, very, very important. Okay, Allah asked, any thoughts about the number of years for review, doctor? Some say maybe three years. Actually, you can do over twenty years or ten years. This guy did twenty years. You can do ten years also. Five years might be a bit too short. I think 10 years is good. Okay. Three years might not give you a lot of information that you need. And then this is the Prisma diagram. This will show the entire searching process. This, uh, this and this are the major differences of narrative review versus systematic review. Okay. Always keep that in mind. Different, different is very, very rigorous. Very, very rigorous. 
Okay, this is a very good example in case you have a medical area. Okay, this for social guys, you can go through this sample. This is a very, very good sample, all right? If you need this sample, in case if you cannot find it, go and nudge in Telegram group. I will share it later. I have this paper, don't worry. I can share it later. If you need this paper, please kindly nudge in my, or just ask request in my Telegram group. I will share it in Telegram group. This is the link for my Telegram group, all right? Do you recommend providing such graph in this chapter too? Yes, you can. Why not? Of course you can. If you want to provide, it will be a good thing to provide. Why not? Okay, I think it's a good question, Sama. Yeah, you can. All right? So anyone wants this paper, go ahead and request it in my telegram. I've shared the link already. Okay, next one. meta -analysis. Even this also, if you want this paper for medical guys, whoever joined today, if you need a sample of this paper, who wants to know how to do systematic even meta analysis together. Okay, this is a very complex thing. That's why you can see. The, 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 uh, the final outcome or the final uh, uh, prospect of this paper is a bit different. You have more uh, complex things to do. Okay, this would be also ISI, sorry, this is ISI Q1 Impact Factor 3.67. Huh? It's a very good journal, very, very good journal. Uh, this is, this is um, I think this is Taylor and Francis. Yeah, Taylor and Francis, correct. This is Taylor Francis, uh, Total Quality Management. This is Australian Dental Journal. Uh, uh, SEIQ2, ISIQ2, Impact Factor 2.419, which is also a good paper, definitely a good paper. Um, um, this thing is more or less the same, but if you want to look at meta-analysis, this is a good paper to refer to. Okay, so if you need it, request it in Telegram group. I'll share it. And then you have engineering. Okay, this is the paper that uh, I shared recently with a student from, I think, Coventry University. I was working, uh, we were working on his paper, we were coaching and working on his paper as well. And then uh, he told my supervisor, he said, uh, don't mention the word systematic review. He literally told me, don't mention the word systematic review because it is used for medical area. I'm like, oh, you, what to tell to this to supervisor? Uh, because you cannot educate people who, who don't want to learn, who don't know how to learn. Okay, how, how they, they want to follow CRISPR, but they don't want to mention systematic review. How to have how to, they, you know, it's like they're telling, I want Ferrari engine, but I don't want Ferrari body. You give me a Toyota body, but I want Ferrari engine. How is that even possible? How is that even remotely possible? So then what I did, I shared this paper. This is from uh, the Dr. Noor Afini from UM, uh, the paper we recently worked on, uh, Journal of Building Engineering. Very, very good journal, very good paper to refer to. So if you are from engineering area or computer science for that matter, you want to refer to a sample, this is a good sample you can look at because always engineering and computer science, they are... Uh, they can easily overlap. Okay, digital, if you bring into anything, then, then you can easily bring in computer science aspect. Okay, computer science, instead of subject area, it's becoming a methodology. Okay, it's a tool, very, very important, where you can go into any specific areas that you want. So, if, in case if you want to understand building engineering, oh, sorry, uh, systematic review for computer science, building engineering, or engineering, generally, you can look at this paper. All right, this is a conceptual paper huh, in engineering. Very rare, very, very rare, right? So same thing here. Here they look at number of issues okay, in that particular areas, okay? And that particular area. And then uh, they draw it down as a conceptual framework of the study, what they should look into to explore further in terms of research gap. And then this is the Prisma flow, right? So if you need a sample of this also, I can share. This is also ISIQ1 impact factor 5.318. So just now Dr. Navida said, I want ISIQ1, Q2. These are good examples. And we have done it before already. This I always say, systematic review, you can always try for it. Okay. Is there any any other data search after web or size focus other advanced search? Yes, I'll come to that. Don't worry. I have a template for that as well. Some of you who attended the last class, you guys can know, but for those who never, don't worry. I'll share with you later. All right. Now let's go to systematic review process. All right, systematic versus scoping. Systematic has very specific question. Scoping don't have specific topic. It's very broad. Okay, understand this very clearly. Huh? I'll tell you specifically at which point of your thesis will be scoping, at which point will be systematic. That means which kind of journal you can write. Subject, specific known, addresses a broad topic. Systematic, quantitative or qualitatively answer a specific question. Scoping provides an overview of the available research evidence without producing a summary answer to a very specific, it's not very specific, it's very broad scoping. Okay, when is scoping, when is systematic? All right, so this is where you need to know when I can write which channel. Okay, now, many of you attended my classes already. How many of you never seen this diagram before? 
Because if you have seen before, I already explained before, I don't want to explain again. If you never seen this diagram before, you don't know what is this diagram, you want me to explain, I will explain. All right, so let me know, the audience. Right, so it seems like many still never seen before. Um, okay, right. Anyone has never seen before? Okay, la. only if you oh, no, more. Okay, all right, surprising. Okay, no worries. This is our PhD consultancy framework. You'll never find this diagram anywhere in any website, anywhere in the world. I can guarantee you that because I created this, right? Uh, if any of you want this for reference, you can easily go to my website. In case if you are going through your PhD or master's process, you don't know what to do next, what to do next, you can go to my PhD website. You can scroll all the way down here and you can refer to the diagram here. Okay, you can always go for reference. You can go to this. This is my website, right? Okay, so you can do that. Now, let me explain this process very quickly, yeah? very quickly. We have step one to step 11, all right? We have proposal, we have thesis. Masters also can follow this, all right? Uh, proposal, we always start with 10 pages proposal. Okay, 10 pages proposal is what you do. What you do in 10 pages proposal? You normally read very broad, okay? You don't go very narrow first. Why? Because you're trying to find a title, a footing, a topic that you want to work on. So you read very, very broad. You read everything from rubbish to silver to gold to everything you will read. Okay, that is what you call as scoping review process. That is what you can write a paper at that stage. That means the first initial stage of a PhD can write a paper already. Scoping review process. Okay, all right. So 10 pages you have introduction, background, problem statement, um, uh, RO, RQ. You don't have, if you have computer science, probably you don't have RQ, you only have RO. That's totally fine. Engineering, so you won't have RQ, totally fine. A significance of study or literature review, you might have theory, you might have fundamentals, you might have models in computer science, doesn't really matter. Everything is actually the same, just different name. Then you have a solution either in framework, system, uh, a module, doesn't matter. Then you have a solution and then finding a methodology which you're going to apply to achieve that solution. These are the 10 different sections in 10 pages proposal which you can derive via a scoping review process. Okay. All right, that is the first thing. This is the first thing only when you coach and consult, this is the first thing you will do. You will, student will say, no, I already went to chapter one, I already went to chapter two, I say, I don't care. Chapter one, chapter two, without having a 10 pages to inform your respectful supervisor on your overall idea is not a good process to start with because the supervisor would not, would not be able to see the entire picture. So always try to produce a 10 pages proposal that comprise the summary of your chapter one to three proposal is a very good approach to move forward. So then your supervisor will have a better idea on what is going to be the potential outcome. Then you have chapters one to three. That means one supervisor is happy and smiling here. Uh, then you move to chapter one to three. Okay, that is about 60 to 80 pages roughly. And then from there you do your proofreading. Okay, then here is the first, actually this is the second line. Supposedly you can generate a general here, but I don't normally impose because students are very new, but you can if you want to. But this is usually the best place to start writing. From here, you can write conceptual paper, which explains your entire concept, whether engineering, computer science, or, or uh, uh, social science, or medical, everything can have a conceptual framework. Showing your entire concept like this. This is building engineering. Does it look anything like social science? No, but they have a conceptual framework to show where things are moving and what are the gaps, All right? Okay, so second thing you can write is systematic review paper, which focuses on systematic review focuses on the entire trend. Okay, so that means your conceptual paper focuses on chapters one, two, three. Your systematic review only focuses on chapter two. Okay, then you continue. Okay, all this done. Then you continue to prepare for your defense and so on. Normally, up. Normally, you can do this concurrently. Normally, once you finish coaching chapters one to three, students will go and submit, talk to the supervisor. Sometimes you talk to the supervisor directly, um, go, to, go to the supervisor, come back, comes back. Uh, many ask me, why do we have a supervisor and then we have uh, a, a coach as well? Well, everywhere we have coach. You have performance coach, you have business coach, you have tuition teacher for secondary school. Okay, everywhere there is coach. Silicon Valley has coach as well. Okay, Google got coach, Apple got their own business coach and so on. 
Same thing. Everywhere that you are stuck, you can always have a coach to coach you. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Um, supervisor, supervisor, sometimes super, for many students, supervisor is enough. So they just come to us for close reading. Totally fine. For some people, it, everyone have different flavor, right? Everyone have different uh, mental capacity or intelligence and so on. Everyone have different level. We cannot judge everyone based on one person's success, okay? All right, just because I graduated before time in two years and 10 months doesn't mean everyone can. Doesn't mean I'm smart. Probably I was lucky. Okay, probably you're not so lucky at this point of time, so you take more time. But probably you will um, grow in life very fast. Versus me, I might be very slow in, in my career. So not everyone have the same equation here, okay? So then uh, before you go for your defense and so on, you can start producing the papers already while you're supposed to reading the proposal that you created. And then you go for pro, uh, proposal defense. While you're doing a proposal defense and so on, then you're supposed to review the two papers that you've written here. And then while you do your defense correction, after defense correction, probably you'll get a review back for your journals. Go through the review, address it, and then also you can concurrently do your data collection because data collection is data collection. All right. Um, unless you do active programming, then you just do active programming. All right. Then you do chapters four and five analysis, blah, 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 stick it in, finish your whole thesis, finish your chapters one to five. Uh, okay. And then your two journal production. One more here. Okay. What is this? This is your empirical paper. Obviously, you can do more than one. And you can do meta analysis with your new systematic review paper. That means this review will compare and will discuss only about the resulting outcome or all the empirical works that have been done. Because you'll be doing a meta analysis based on all the available empirical results and yours as well. Okay, I have a sample there. If you want the sample of the dentist journal, dental journal meta analysis, do let me know. Um, I can share it with you. Okay. Uh, in Telegram group, all right? So then you conduct your proofreading for your thesis, you go ahead uh, and uh, submit for Viva. Viva will take three months. Meanwhile, you can settle all the other journals and also, when you're settling all your journals, that means you're preparing yourself for Viva because you go through a lot of review response, which will train you as well. It's a very good thing. And then finish your Viva, go for your major or minor correction. This is one of the important segments that we always consult. Because students at this point, they're exhausted already. They don't know what. So normally they'll say, doctor, what am I supposed to do answering this examiner now? I spoke to my examiner, my, my supervisor. My supervisor advised me this, and I also tried doing this, but I probably need your opinion as well. Okay, fine, I'll give the opinion, I'll give the coaching and so on. Okay, so after this is done, from the future work, from the future work of your thesis, you can also write another scoping review paper because it's exploring another segment of your idea. All right, so how do we normally do all of that? How do we normally do all of those uh, coaching processes and all of this? Normally, we have something called mode one and mode two, content commenting or, and along with online coaching. We don't do face-to-face -face anymore. Okay? No one wants to come to face-to-face. -to -face. We also don't do, so we just do everything on Google Meet. So let's say we have written, okay, one of the doctors or students have written systematic review, you're not sure whether it's good enough or not. You need some really, really thorough comments to improve the paper further, to understand the flow, whether it's okay or not, then you go for content commenting. This is for someone who has already written and completed the paper or the chapter or thesis, systematic review or any other prospect of it, okay? And then those comments, I would always advise to go through for online coaching to understand the comments because some of them can be very, very brutal, all right? Be better, be brutal than the viewers be brutal. Let's say you've never written anything, you don't know what to write, you don't know how to start, then these two would be suitable. This would be a coaching plan, a very, very detailed coaching plan, and this would be content editing only for special cases, okay? Now, coming down to methodologies for systematic review, you have Prisma, which has 27 items to follow under Prisma. Then you have Ramses, which has 19 items. Then you have Roses. This is all different protocol, huh? There is no such thing. You might think only Prisma is there. No, there are many different things to follow. You can follow Prisma, you can follow Ramses, you can follow Roses. Okay, Prisma, what is Prisma? Preferred reporting items for systematic review and meta-analysis. That's why they call it Prisma. First report in 2009 by Mohe. Prof Mohe from Eastern Canada. I think it's in Calgary, if I'm not mistaken. Calgary or Vancouver, either one of it. And then Prisma 2020 replaced Prisma 2009. There is a new update of Prisma 2020. In case if you want to understand further, I won't be able to cover a lot on that today because uh, it's a huge topic. But here you go. This is the class. 
systematic review and prisma 2020 in case if you are interested you want to learn further this is the class all right and then uh, in case if you want to oh, let me switch this off uh, in case if you want to learn more about uh, review, uh, no, review paper I've covered a lot today. There is one more class, systematic, there's one more here, systematic review. More other details that might not be mentioned here, might also be mentioned here. Okay, all right. Let me close that also. Okay, so now let's go. SLR basics. As I told, it's just an alternative method. Okay, before I go further into this, it's almost 11.30 now. Any questions so far? Are you guys are all following well? Am I going too fast? Um, can you guys follow? If you need any questions, if you have anything to ask, feel, please feel free to ask. I'll definitely try to answer. All good so far. Don't feel shy to ask. Okay. All right. So we have one finger there. Okay. All right. That's very good. So anyone can follow. That's good. That's really good. Okay. So, okay. SLR basics. It's just an alternative method. So don't make a big deal out of it. Systematic review is just, just an alternative method. People talk a lot about systematic review, systematic review, just marketing. It's just part of marketing. People who are running workshops, people who are you know, uh, making it sound very complex and so on. It's just an alternative method. So don't worry uh, if the, it sounds very complex. It is not. It is not. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Meta. Thank you. All right. So then comes databases. Someone asked this question earlier. What databases can I use? I'll share with you, but these are the common ones. Scopus, Science Direct, Google Scholar, uh, and Web of Science. Boolean searches normally used or an N. Or they use add one search function. Then there are two kinds of search. One is direct search, which is the first thing you will do. And then once you've filtered all the papers, you will do next thing called snowballing. Snowballing to get more papers. Okay, next thing. You decide based on inclusion, exclusion criteria. Mostly avoids review papers. And you need to specify which timeline you're looking at papers. Okay. Okay, our answer. If you have any questions, you can ask here. Yeah? Then once you have downloaded all the papers, you need to do screening process and independence. Examining titles, abstract, and whatever required according to the title. And then you build literature matrix. I have a very good news for you all today because I've already done a literature matrix template, which you guys can use for free. Don't need to worry. All right. Upon filtration, quality assessment to be conducted, qualitatively, high, moderate, low. You can choose based on this, whether uh, high, uh, highly to uh, highly likely to include, moderately to include, or never to include, okay, depending on your quality assessment. How to do quality assessment? I don't have an answer because every topic is different in terms of quality assessment. You have to study systematic review within your own topic to get a very you know, inclusive idea, okay? Okay, this is what we call Prisma Nightmare. How many of you here has actually gone through Prisma before? Any of you gone through Prisma before? Very good, Allah. Anyone else? Hmm? Okay. This one, you can read it if you want to. So it's basically break into session, title, abstract, introduction. Under methods, you must read very carefully. Okay, very, very carefully, you must read it. Then you have a reporting by assessment. Then you have results, how to present results, how to do discussion and other information. But this, I have made it simpler. I have made it very, very simple which I'll share the diagram, but here is the video for it. I've uploaded that into my TikTok. I'm not active in TikTok nowadays. I have to start back again, but this is the video, all right? Uh, 12 step systematic review. If you, want it, if you want to understand easily how to do systematic review, this is the video for you to go and watch. It will tell you exactly what you must do from step one to step 12, all right? So hopefully that will help you. And this is the difference of 2009 versus 2020, the latest update. Uh, noteworthy changes to the Prisma 2009 statement, inclusion of the abstract reporting checklist, movement of protocol registration, modification of the search, blah, 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 blah. When I give you the, the, the slide later, you can go through all the salient points to understand. But you can just follow my 12 uh, steps. I think it's more than enough. I've already summarized that already. Okay. Now, selection of databases. A lot of people have been asking this. 
how do I select database? Which one to do? Some, some people say do Scopus and Web of Science. Some people say don't do Google Scholar. Some people say do Google Scholar. Web. How am I supposed to decide? Very simple. Look at prior systematic literature review of recognized databases. That means you go to prior systematic review papers, see which databases they have included. You can pick all of them. Okay, go, the 10 years papers they're looking at, some of them could be, oh, no, not those are mostly empirical papers. If you don't do systematic review process in the past uh, three years, check out which databases they're including in your own subject area. Decide based on that. And then, Next thing, once you have done that, go to your supervisor and co-author, get advice, okay? Although I am a coach and consultant, this is what I always have to tell all the students, okay? Always ask your supervisor. Ultimatum is your supervisor. No matter what Dr. Tawa say, no matter what any other coach say, end of the day, the ultimatum is supervisor. Always respect your supervisor, ask your supervisor, okay? Let's say if you come to me, if I advise, say, doctor, which one to include or use my template, I'll give you a whole long list and then you include, you go to your supervisor and say, no, I don't want all this. You can explain. I took it from Dr. Tawa's database. This is it, this, the, all the diagram. If you say, no, I don't know all this, remove it. Follow the instruction and remove it. Okay, end of the day, the ultimate is supervisor. Always remember that. Okay, uh, Habib, search a single database multiple. Come into that. Don't worry. I'll answer you. Uh, okay, uh, Ms. Fatini has, Fatini has already uh, shared feedback form for today's session. Please kindly fill up the form. Uh, register yourself. Okay, next thing. Always stick to databases that provides high impact research. Always, that, that means I would not go for error. I would not look at all these uh, lousy databases, all right? That don't even have any name for it. Okay, so always stick to databases that provides high impact research. Web of Science, Scopus, ABDC, PubMed, you know, so on and so forth. So how do you explain in a paper? How did you decide it? Databases, okay, very simple. Details of databases are provided in table one. These databases were chosen based on systematic review guideline from the Social Care Institute for Excellence, SCIE. The experiences, okay, first they went through SCIE, then they went through the experiences of other researchers, as I said, in papers. So these are all other researchers until here, okay. Then, Consultations with subject librarians, if you have librarians, you understand consulting and consult, and scoping exercises for relevant literature. Okay, that means you go read widely, scoping liter literature, and on ac accessibility within Ulster University where the work was undertaken. Okay, due to the nature of topic, we advisable to include databases from both education from social care, social services, as well as a multidisciplinary database, such which was Actually, which were Scopus, uh, Psych Info was included because of its focus on <coughs> behavioral and social science research. Okay, so if any of you ask how to explain what to include, that is how you can explain. But what to include, there you go. Okay, so this is this is a full list of databases that I've already shared many times already in the previous classes. You can download this database. Okay, if you are from this 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 whole first number eight eight databases are all subject. These are all the links you can use. Medical you can use this uh, on top of this. Okay, on top of this you can add additional. This is medical. If you're from engineering, you can use this. If you're from social science, you can use this. All right, this is the database that you can make use of uh, when you want to um, uh, what do you call that? When you want to um, do a systematic search. Okay. So let me go down here. Okay, now here. Did any of you attempted to join Telegram group and cannot join? Fail to join? In case if you guys, uh, any of you tried and cannot join because I get a private message, they cannot join. Oh, okay, sorry, okay. So, the, oh, sorry, excuse me. So, the link is working, all right? So, from here, you search database. Okay, database here. You can go and download that file here. All right, this is the file. Database. You can use the link from here. Okay, open with and door. 
can click here okay all the links are given here all right so you can use that for your systematic process next thing jcr is the most important everyone knows that web of science is the boss is the boss of all bosses you must always have web of science right it goes without saying how do you search you can use double quotation for very specific word that you want you can use title apps key that means uh, based on the title based on the abstract use this keyword to search all right um, this is for exact phrase as well this is for uh, wording that have very similar ending woman woman you can put boom question mark so you'll get content from both both spaces and then you can use n and or boolean uh, operators to do the search now how long can a search string be some papers even include the search string eh, to 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 actually show the evidence they'll include the search string as well here is an example this is how long a search string can be okay so if you think that systematic review is easy to do to a certain extent it is easy but when this kind of things kick in it's going to get tough lah, all right so this is a good example i'll show you i can share with you later you can have a look you can follow the same thing like you can just replace your your, your specific keyword here you can replace okay these are all the keywords okay all right next thing how complex can the whole process be if you really write down everything this is the complexity of the processes number one two number 14 okay so you've got a research question preliminary research you've got inclusion exclusion search strategy searching databases uh, then you have uh, what are the databases which database gives you which papers and then a protocol writing uh, for approval from supervisor title and abstract screening this is the this keyword title apps key okay title apps key is here then your full text okay full text uh, downloading um, um, then data then you have uh, manual search data extraction quality assessment data checking task statistic analysis data double checking then manuscript writing revision this is only for meta analysis only use, useful for meta analysis but don't worry about this if you think this is very complex i have already simplified it okay again if you go back to uh, what was it just now uh, my tiktok right so this one this video explains this diagram this diagram you can find in my telegram group here okay um, systematic okay systematic review uh, diagram is systematic processes okay you can make use of it so basically step one form research questions or problem step two search to validate the idea to assure none had done it before this is very important huh? you must search first if anyone else had done similar review before or not before you start doing the review same like how do you literature review on a topic systematic review so you must do the same got and people had done it before or not like last week i had one uh, doctor came to me and uh, asked me for advice i already wrote a paper submitted if you want got rejected because i have another paper which is very similar to what i'm doing what can i do i told you have to scrap the whole paper you have to rewrite a new one because there is no way you can tweak a bit and tweak a bit of that and then uh, get a different result no the schematic process that means you have to change the whole topic and go for top to bottom again okay then based on the your topic based on your title set inclusion exclusion criteria now if you do know how to set the inclusion exclusion that also i have information on my telegram group uh, type inclusion okay slr inclusion exclusion template i've already did one example here based on the slides today i've already shown you um, how how to break down from uh, title educational impact of being a young carer for age 16 to 24 based on this title how to uh, design down the uh, what do you call that keywords and then how to do the search okay i mean how but once the search is done how to actually um, uh, extrapolate the papers how to actually extract the papers so under uh, first trial first trial second trial second trial you can have a look at this this first trial second trial is basically changing the sensitivity and precision so that you get more papers okay if you have lesser keywords 
That means it's very precise, but that means you get lesser papers. That means sensitivity is very low, because it, so that you get lesser papers. But if more keywords, that means the sensitivity is very high, but less precise, but you'll get more papers, which is true. It's okay, all right? But don't be too, uh, too, uh, too, uh, uh, too high sensitive, very high sensitivity will result in a lot of papers, okay? Uh, Vijaya, there are many articles already review the similar area of research. Any tips on how to still publish a review? But do what they never done it before, okay? Because there is always new information. There is always new aspect of things to look at. So try to find that new thing that you want to look at, new thing that you want to explain, right? There is always new thing. Otherwise, systematic review will stop every year. But every year they are continuing because there's something new to explore, right? You have to find that new thing. Okay, then these are search strategy. Keywords used to Boolean operators and filters. Then step number five, databases explore. I already shared with you databases. Then you write the protocol, methodology, and seek for ethical clearance if required. Okay, ethical clearance if required. Start screening title abstract. Then after that, you narrow down, you screen full text, apply inclusion, exclusion. Then after that, you go down further, manual search by forward and backward snowballing. Then you do quality assessment, must have at least two percent doing quality assessment. Then start reviewing all the selected papers and extract similar and differential information because those are your gaps. And then produce literature matrix based on the, based on the outcome of, uh, and, and then based on outcome of matrix, start writing the papers and thesis. Okay? Backward snowballing is very simple. I've explained to you before. A paper, when you already narrow, let's say from 200 papers, you already went down to 30 papers only. So now you need more from the 30 papers, look at their reference list, get more papers from that. And then also forward snowballing, you look at from this paper, sorry, from this paper that you are reading, you want to see in future who had cited this paper. You want to also look at those papers. That means that is called forward snowballing. Okay. Is that clear? It is a bit complex already. I hope you guys can follow so far. It takes a lot of time to understand these mechanisms, right? This itself is a, is a topic to study. I hope you guys are clear and I'm not going too fast because it's only two hours, right? So I cannot go very slow as well. So I hope you guys understand that. And I cannot have too many classes as well because I'm very busy. I hope you guys understand. I'm very sorry about that. So I try to cover all the key indicators in this class, all the key items that uh, a lot of people actually miss out addressing. Okay, I've, I've, I've seen a lot of systematic review workshops, a lot of workshop slides I've reviewed before. People, trainers will come to me and review the slides as well. Um, some of them, they are very basic. They don't teach you the depthness that you want to learn. So you guys are all okay, I believe. Everything is okay, no response. That means I assume you guys are okay. Now, from this example topic, inclusion, exclusion is what the template I've created already. I've given you an example already. Uh, so I'm not going to go through this. You can go through the example. However, I'm going to explain this sensitivity and precision. The okay, sensitivity and precision. Um, sensitivity means low sensitivity. You get more papers. High uh, 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 low sensitivity, high precision. This one is low. This one is high. Low sensitivity, high precision. You get lesser papers. Okay, lesser papers. That means very less keywords here because you want to be very precise, okay, very less keywords here. Then you get lesser papers, but you, if you want more papers, that means from 200 papers that you search, you want to actually uh, get at least 60, 70 papers. That means you must increase the sensitivity, which will reduce your precision. This actual measure, this is how they measure. Okay, sensitivity high means you got more keywords, more keywords, more keywords. Here also might add more. So that means you will get more items to extract as part of your paper. But precision will drop, which is okay. There is a balance. You must balance it out. But if you add too many keywords, there, there, there won't be balance. Then you will be reviewing very, very broad. Very hard for you to review later. Okay? Then once you've already downloaded the papers, use literature review summary sheet. Okay? Most of the equipment tools that you need, I have already produced for free. It's up to you to use it. Right? So everything is given to you, available resources for free. Okay, so you can go through these resources. You can, when you read every paper, don't simply download the paper and save the paper. Okay, don't download and save the paper. I know you have a folder of papers. When you look at it, you feel so proud. <laughs> I never actually end up reading it. 
All right, you have every day open the folder, you save, you be like, wow, amazing, I have all these papers I need to read, so excited. But then it's just there, lah. all right, okay. So uh, that happens, happens to me also. How I know, because I'm also part of it, part of the group. So what I normally do to overcome it, I download, I try to read immediately. And I use this template to summarize that paper. So you can see I've already included all the key points that you need to summarize. Already shared this, the third class I'm sharing again the same thing. So for those who never attend before, you can download this again from my same Telegram group, okay? Now, from there, you can, uh, forget this smiley face, I forgot to uh, delete this. You can um, download my literature review matrix template, which I already shared already in the Telegram group as well. So you can download that and make use of it. So you can change as you please and uh, start working on it. Lah. All right, okay? So this is also given to you guys. Next. Criteria for a SLR writing. First, in SLR, you must have this diagram. This will tell you all the uh, uh, processes that you went through, your filtration process, your identification, your screening, your eligibility, and what you have included at the end. You must explain this step by step. That means every step that you do, you must record it to show from 1,211 papers and also 125 papers that you got from other sources, you only uh, you remove the duplicates for you remove the duplicates end up you only have 430 how to remove duplicate how would you guys remove the duplicate the fastest way let's say you download from various sources right obviously you download a lot of similar paper, papers right how would you very quickly remove the duplicates hmm. very good Reference manager, Mengele and Note, they will do the trick. You don't need to worry so much. Okay, just add, 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 keep adding to the same library. Okay? Make sure you don't use a different library, use the same library. <clears throat> okay. Next thing, after screening, you got 165 papers. You have already explored 265. Then, after assessment, you only got 102. You another remove another 15 papers. Then finally, after qualitative, qualitative assessment, that means quality assessment, you only have 87 left for your entire review. This is the whole process. Lah. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the entire research flow. Research questions. <clears throat> this is a diagram that was in the paper. It's not the sample I told you. Huh? So if you need that, you can request in Telegram group. All right. So um, research question you define, then you define the keywords that you're using. What is your inclusion criteria? And then how uh, the article selection based on what? Then you refine. Then you extract your data, find how many papers, what are the information extraction, and from data synthesis, what did you know? This is the entire process flow you must have, good to have in your paper. Okay, this I already explained to you why. Uh, okay, now this one is one thing I explained to you, the curve. All right, this one I explained to you, right? This is another thing you can have. What is this? This is basically telling from all the papers that you downloaded, what is their stature? What, what is the quality of the papers that you're looking at? See, here we even indicate, okay, these people even indicate A star, A, A, uh, Q1, Q4, Q3, what is it, what is the impact factor, under scopus, what is size score, why? To show the quality of the research, the kind of papers that they are reviewing, and the kind of papers that are actually interested in this particular review. So that is how you actually boost the confidence of your systematic review. And then publication distribution, all of this, uh, this one to show if Social demography is important for your research, particularly your research. You want to see all over the world how they are moving. Yeah, and you can also do this to show the country wide and uh, sorry, global wide. Okay. Okay, next thing constructs, particular constructs that you're focusing on, themes and constructs, because it's a review, right? It's not technical. Like, uh, for example, computer science, you can put IoT uh, for uh, uh, home, smart home. IOT for smart toilet, IOT for uh, smart city, okay? Then you can see how many papers are being done in this particular area between this year to this year, okay? Total, okay, dimensions quoted and so on. So those are the things that you can actually analyze as well. Okay, so next thing, uh, journal versus thesis for systematic approach. Okay, SLR for thesis, key problems with Prisma. You can use Prisma, not wrong, but there are some key problems about Prisma. Problem number one, not designed for reviews that involve narrative, qualitative, or mixed method, right? It's not a, a, a method that is used for uh, this, kind of, this kind of methodology, 
originally more for quantity. That was the original of origin of PRISMA. Problem number two, systematic mapping has emerged as a popular method for evidence synthesis. Not systematic review, it is called systematic mapping, not review. But PRISMA cannot be easily adapted for these methods that rely more heavily on searching and screening. Problem number three, PRISMA might not be suitable for latest standards of researchers. Refer to paper titled Roses Reporting Standards for Systematic Evidence Synthesis. If you want this paper also, I'll probably, I think I'll email you as part of the notes as well. Okay, I'll, 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 this Roses paper will tell you exactly what is the limitation of PRISMA. So, alternatively, you can use Roses. Roses are creating for environmental health or environmental related research, but you can adopt it for different segments as well. And how is it different? Roses is another protocol, same like PRISMA. Roses is more on systematic mapping and reviews, while PRISMA focuses on reviews only. This one got systematic mapping or systematic maps. Systematic mapping combines the concept of scoping review as well. So it's sort of scoping and systematic come together process, all right? It has different checklists, summary and flow diagram. See upcoming slides for process flow, and you can include quality and narrative reviews as well. You can use include industry papers, white papers, green papers, whatever papers you want to include, you can include, all right? So this is process flow. Process flow, uh, you got records identified through database searching and other sources you can include as well. Right? A lot of people don't realize this, but usually Prisma, they don't have this. Some people do include, but sometimes they don't have it. Okay, But actually, Roses has it. That means you can not only do, don't need to only include from database, you can also include from other extracts. All right? So then, uh, um, then you do the rest, um, duplicates, and then um, uh, after title screening, after abstract screening, uh, retrieve, blah, 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 pre-screen articles from other sources also. Okay, you can include here. Why this? You have to read process process. Okay, and then um, exclude the full text. You can put more details in it. Um, article studies included after, uh, after full uh, text screening. And then from there, the rest of the processes. Okay, I won't have time to go through the whole thing, but I'll share with you the details, the table. You can definitely have a look process. Okay, so um, this one you can answer later once you go through the process, the differences. Okay, the, the paper I'll share with you definitely. Okay, when to write SLR papers. <clears throat> okay, now we go back to the same summary diagram. Now, if your thesis is already systematic review chapter two, then writing systematic review paper is very easy. Very, very easy for you. But the challenge is doing systematic review in thesis, which is not that easy. I have to be honest to you. But if you have not, if you have not done narrative, if you have not done systematic review in thesis, then writing systematic review paper, you have to redo the whole search process again. Okay? So concept paper is to represent the solution of a thesis, what you intend to do. In a, in, a, in a framework manner, whether you are from computer science, physics, medical, whatever it is, you can always have a conceptual framework. Uh, Karam, is it optional now to use place for 19 or 20? I think you can use 20. You can use the latest one, obviously. Okay. Then you have scoping paper, which you can do based on the step one of my diagram, very early stage. Then SLR paper, you can talk about thread, data. Okay, that means roadmap. Where is the what is happening, where the reward is heading in your area, what is happening in future, and so on. Conceptual paper, you don't need to just discuss about your solution only. Then you have empirical paper, obviously, and then SLR and meta-analysis. Again, this one is not related to this, because this one, you're not going to talk about results. This one is definitely talking about results only. Your results, whatever results you get from your thesis. And then another scoping review based on your future work, new research agenda. Okay? Yes, you're right, you said. Okay, after all of this, I always have to emphasize this. Not because you're providing proofreading, but it goes without saying. Many people write very good paper, they go down the line, they don't do proofreading, they just rely on Grammarly. Grammarly is not bad, but it's not enough. I have to be honest. I do. I use Grammarly as well, so I know how limited Grammarly is. Uh, but in the spirit of, you know, uh, getting Grammarly done and then you think it's enough, you go down the line, come back, as you proofread again. So you're just wasting time. Always proofread before you submit. Very, very important. Please do that. Over the years, I think that had actually improved a lot. We have raised a lot of awareness with all the universities. 
how the process flow actually works. And now they sort of understand many of them, many still don't, you cannot reach to everyone, but I'm still telling you, always do proofreading right after your supervisor write the paper or write the thesis or your co-authors write your paper and then you're already good with the content, then do proofreading, thorough, thorough proofreading, make sure it's perfect in terms of flow. Even then you will still sometimes get language related issues. I still get that. Uh, last week I got one, okay? You'll be surprised, like, why proofreading companies actually telling out that they get uh, uh, negative results? Yes, who won't get? Everyone gets negative results, okay? Because you cannot satisfy everyone in the world. One review will come out, they will talk like, they, you know, they got literature, linguistic, uh, what they call that, a PhD from uh, Harvard, but probably they're not even native spoken, okay? But sometimes they create a lot of drama, but that's okay. We will address it one way or another, okay? Mohaimin privately sent me question mark. Uh, what do you want? What do you mean, Muhammad? Ah, okay. If you want to talk about uh, services and so on, I don't want to do it here because we don't have time. I want to focus on the knowledge. So, no, no talking about services here. You can contact me uh, privately. Okay, let me let me focus on the on the knowledge first. Okay, all right. So, proofreading itself is a knowledge as well. If you, either you do it on your own, or you pay someone to do, or your co-authors do it, they're very good. Or your local language school do it, do it. Please do it. That's very very important. Okay, all right. And then, uh, so we can take it offline, Mohamed, no problem. Okay. When I say language, what kind of transformation? This is the primary example of an ISI Q1 review paper, Impact Factor 5.3018, the amount of transformation it goes through, okay, when it comes to uh, paraphrasing, proofreading, editing, and structuring. This is what we look at, right? This is very, very important because if your content is all good, you follow all the process, please, all good, everything done, check and balance, everything perfect, but your language flow is not there, then this theory comes in. Good content, bad language, no one can understand or appreciate. Okay? Bad content, good language, also useless. Well, I'm not going to say, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you, proofreading will definitely get accepted, no such thing. If anyone tells you that they are lying, no such thing. So readers are happy, but there is no value. So you must have good content and good language to have readers appreciate the value and love to read. Both must work hand in hand. Okay, right? Always keep that in mind. And that is what you must observe if you're paying someone to do proofreading, editing, paraphrasing, structuring, and so on. Make sure they do justice. This one I'm raising awareness. If they change one word, one word, one word, one word, you can use grammar. You don't waste your money. Okay, don't waste your money. Always keep that in mind. Okay, all right. So this is the outcome of this paper. Anyone in engineering wants to do systematic review and conceptual paper, this is a good example to look at. Very good paper from you, right? All right. This is another one. Okay, this. Okay, anyone wants to know further on systematic review itself methodology? We worked on this paper as well, Dr. Harold's paper, guidelines for developing systematic literature review for studies related to climate change adaptation. But you can also look at the prospect of the methodology. Uh, this is SCI Q1 Impact Factor 4.3. Also a very good paper as a guideline, Dr. Harold's paper. This is the transformation these people went through. These people, we went through a lot of struggle to get it accepted, right? So if you want to read guideline, this is a good paper. Our local guy had developed a very simple guideline as well. Okay, so this is a good document to look at. Okay, general production tips. As I've seen above all top-notch top -notch papers from my esteemed clients, um, important points I always discuss with them, again, when it comes to paper, don't assume your reader understands everything. Explain and be descriptive. Make sure the ideas are well structured in the paper. Avoid all over the place method. Polish and always polish. If you're a supervisor, make sure your student polish many times before they send to you. Or if you're a student, before you send your supervisor, make sure you polish many times so that you will give them with minimal errors. Don't give them with a lot of errors because you want them to focus on the content, not the language errors or the bluttering errors, right? And yellow does get a solid editor to proof and edit your material. This one goes without saying. You really need it, okay, unless you're a native speaker. Even my native guys sometimes paraphrase the paper also, the editor from the English that they write, the review from the English that they write, only God can understand the English, and even then, they'll still complain about the language. Okay, so that's why sometimes I'll be speechless. I got one review last week. They say, please, uh, uh, please uh, 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 rewrite the paper based on international English. 
I was scratching my head. I was like, what the hell is international English? English to only one English, British or American English. Where go international English? <laughs> the reviewer is not even not, not India. I don't have mentioned who, 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 who. Uh, but this was edited by native editor. That's the best part, native editor from New Zealand. All right. One of my guy, um, PhD, a PhD graduate from New Zealand. Um, and the editor is not native, and the editor was commenting on the native's English, saying that, right, international English. I don't know what is international English. Until now, I'm trying to Google, I don't find any answers. So these are the things that we go through, right? So be careful of your English, all right? Uh, and this is very, very important document. Always submit this. Most of your headache comes in if you don't submit your proofreading certificate. Even if you proofread on your own, if they say proofreading required, you cannot, uh, uh, like you think that your English is very good, try to uh, produce your own certificate, maybe get a supervisor to stamp or something, say my supervisor already said he's an English expert. You can do that as well if you want to save the cost and so on. Obviously you can do that, but this one we created with endorsement from SFEP, HRDF, and also ISO 9001 standard, right? So that strengthens the whole certificate. And we why the reason we add the numbers here, actually this is an old copy, now we have already updated the numbers, to show the experience that we have gained over time, how experienced we are. That's why we put all that, all of that there, okay? Okay, how, what is a suitable uh, language engineering mode, how to choose, okay? For systematic review from all the examples I've shown earlier, they are all paraphrasing, proofreading, editing, structuring. This is, I would always suggest this because of the cost, I have to be fair to students, but some don't mind the, the cost, like uh, Dr. Irfan graduated last week, um, UTM, he went for paraphrasing and the outcome, he got mini, minimum, minimally minimum correction. Supposed to be no correction, almost very close. And I only share this again, only with uh, uh, classes. So you don't find this information anywhere online. Don't worry when you guys WhatsApp me, you always ask me, is the promotion still there? It will be there if you attend to one of these classes, okay? Public as normally I will provide, all right? So up to 30% of proofreading translation formatting services. And don't forget, you always have language warranty, all right? And these are the notes I'm going to provide to all of you. For thesis, if you're using it, go through this paper, process for thesis. Reporting standards for systematic evidence synthesis, pro forma flow diagram and descriptive summary of the plan and conduct of environmental, forget this law, you can use it for any areas, doesn't matter. Systematic review, systematic maps. So you can go through this process. Very good uh, protocol to follow as well. Okay, and then I'm going to share this paper, very, very important paper that I recently found. Developing and applying a protocol for systematic review in the social sciences. Okay. And finally, my ever favorite systematic paper is this, which I'll share with you as well. Okay. So you're going to get all these notes. Please kindly register yourself. Make sure you, you share your email address so I can email all of you. For all of those who attended the previous class, I hope you guys got the notes already. I've emailed all of you guys. Okay. If you never get, go back and check your spam folder. Make sure you check your spam folder. Okay. Okay, now for those who have joined today, would like to review the class and also I need your help. I really need your help this time because I have only one more class for Facebook Live left. I want your suggestion. I want the problem that you're facing to tell me what classes you want in future for Facebook Live. Okay, what do you want me to explain? What do you want me to educate for free? Obviously, uh, you can tell me via this link. Make sure you click the link, hit five star. Don't hit anything less than five star. If you're going to give less than five star, don't click the link. Just WhatsApp me directly. There's a WhatsApp link there. And tell me what classes you want. Don't worry. But if you click the link, only five star. And tell me what classes you want. Uh, background writing, introduction writing, form statement writing, resume objective writing, uh, what do you call that? A literature review, matrix, uh, contribution diagram, methodology writing, blah, 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 discussion writing, conclusion writing, whatever. Uh, how to find papers, you know, whatever that you want. Click that link, mention in the click hit five star, mention in there what you want. Okay, so on that note, don't forget if you are stuck as an academician, you will be stuck as well, a student will be stuck as well. Six core areas we always focus publication content editing, this is examiner response, PhD proposal, defense viva preparations, this is the general conversion, data analysis and interpretations. Whether you're an academic, you're an academician, or you are students, or your group. 
you can always get in touch. Okay, all right. Doesn't matter which subject area, we have more than 100 consultants on different areas. Okay, all right. So, on that note, thank you very much. I hope the systematic review class was good. And, um, sorry, what is this? Okay, uh, and, um, share the necessary knowledge that you guys need. Let me stop sharing the screen and, uh, over to you, uh, Dr. Manmeet. Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Tawa, for no sharing worries. the knowledgeable uh, information, especially on systematic literature review. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that because uh, I've also tried uh, exploring into okay. this uh, domain, yeah. so okay. I think right. it's, it's kind of um, uh, impactful when we are actually publishing and people are citing our work, mm -hmm. right? Yes, okay. So, uh, is there any other last uh, question for Dr. Tawa? Okay, no, I think everyone is you. okay. Yes, okay. So, uh, we have already shared the uh, feedback form. So, mm -hmm. please provide your feedbacks to uh, the most honest feedback because Dr. Tawa would need to see these feedbacks. Yeah, uh, yeah I'd like to, like, to like to see that. Yes, yes, yeah. sure. Okay, so please submit to us and I believe that Dr. Tawa would use the email addresses on mm. that feedback and he will send the notes, right? Dr. Tawa? Yep, yep, that's right. Yes, that's right. okay. And as from our school, what we will do is we uh, we will actually uh, put up this recording in the uh, YouTube channel and I have emailed Dr. Tawa previously and I will email him again mm. the channel. Mm. Uh, so all of you can actually go back there and observe the video again. Okay, so uh, let me just uh, share this. Uh, all right, so I think I would like to capture your attention to the mm -hmm. next final uh, session we will have with Dr. Tawa, mm -hmm. which is on the 1st of November. Okay, so it's at afternoon session, 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. to 5 p.m. So I hope all of you will be able to join. And last but not least, I would like to thank all the audience again. And please do not forget to fill in the, the form. And I also would like to thank the uh, REWS committee uh, who has been supporting this uh, series. So thank you, Dr. Tawa. We will see you in November then. Thank you, many. Thanks a lot. Thanks for organizing. Thank Thanks for your time. Take care. No worries. Okay, take okay. care then. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Get well soon. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Hello, doctor. I have a question. The recording video while sharing the uh, USM uh, YouTube, right? Yes, YouTube yes. Uh, what uh, I will do is I will pass the link to Dr. Tawa. When he send you the notes, he will actually uh, put in the email as well. Okay. okay. All right. So make sure you fill in the form. Okay. 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 All thank right. You. Thank you.